Welcome back to Vikings Game Plan from the beautiful TCO Studios. It's time for Winning Formula. Happy to be joined by former Viking and Super Bowl winning center Matt Burke, Ron Johnson from Vikings Game Day Live, and Wabi from Vikings.com. Let's handle some pertinent topics. Matt, beginning with you, the A topic into the preseason and regular season is new quarterback Kirk Cousins. Let's address expectations. I would say the expectations are pretty high when you give a guy $84 million guaranteed. But look, I mean, Kirk Cousins has thrown to a lot of different receivers in his career. Thielen and Diggs have caught balls from a lot of different guys, so I don't see that as really as really being an issue. You got the offseason to get together, work on it, and then training camp, you're going to get a ton of reps. I agree with that. The rapport with receivers and quarterbacks, that's going to happen naturally. They practice every day together. But the biggest thing I look at is the red zone. Kirk Cousins last year with the Redskins wasn't great in the red zone. And so Minnesota with Case Keenum was great in the red zone. He's yep. going to have to figure that out fast. And I think, you know, with Flip and the new system, hopefully it works out. But I think that's the biggest key is the red zone is where, you know, I think 60 to 70 percent of the touchdowns are scored. That's where he's going to have to get really effective. And Wabi, how about Cousins? Shows up here, Thielen and Diggs, two of the better receivers in the NFL. I, I think maybe the best supporting cast Kirk Cousins has had. And we've talked all offseason about $84 million man and Kirk Cousins and how can he make the Vikings better. But if we really sit back and look at it, how can, how can the Vikings make Kirk Cousins better? This yeah. is the best team that Kirk Cousins has been on. I remember the game at Washington last year. The Redskins defense gave up 38 points to us, and Kirk Cousins scored 30 on Mike Zimmer's defense and loss. Yeah. So now Kirk Cousins comes to a team that's gonna give up 17 points a game or 18 points a game. You know, I, I, think, I think Kirk Cousins, that's gonna be refreshing to him. And when it comes to developing a rapport, actually, when, when you think about it, the Vikings lose Sam Bradford once the regular season starts last year, and Case Keenum had to come in and develop a rapport on the fly. Kirk Cousins has been developing a rapport already. He's already further along than last year's offense was. Guys, how about the identity of the tight end spot here is Kyle Rudolph. Kyle has to be incredibly energized over this move. Yeah, with the Redskins, I mean, if you look at it, when RG3 was the quarterback, Jordan Reed had zero touchdowns that year. The next year, Kirk Cousins starts, Jordan Reed has 11 touchdowns and 87 catches. So he loves to throw to the tight end. One is always an outlet when he gets blitz. The RPO system is going to slow a lot of that blitz down because right. he has the option to either run or pass, and they're going to do it about 20 to 30% of the time it's going to happen. And so I think that's going to help him even more. He's a 4,000-yard passer for the past three seasons, and the tight end has been a big piece. So yes, Kyle Rudolph should be very excited. It's a different type of route with Kyle Rudolph versus a Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed was almost like a true receiver playing in the slot, and that's where they're going to have to learn each other over the next two or three weeks. Now, the Vikings in the offseason also signed defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson, former first-round pick with the New York Jets. Shoot, how good was he? He was defensive rookie of the year. It's a three technique, and Sheldon Richardson has a chance to be the guy that Mike Zimmer really wants. I think the big thing, though, for Sheldon Richardson, not the physical stuff. It's not can he penetrate and is he quick enough and is he strong enough. I think it's all about alignment and technique. Mike Zimmer wants his three technique to be aligned the right way and to execute properly because Zim knows that B-Rob and Daniil Hunter and Everson and Linval are gonna do it. And it, all it does, and you guys know better than we do, all it does is take one guy to be misaligned and to not execute properly and it throws the whole thing off. Well, essentially you get Sheldon Richardson on a, on a prove it kind of deal, right? You know, you, you know the talents there, you know the production's been there on the past. This is a huge year for him personally to kind of restart his NFL career. But you're exactly right. If you get a three technique that can wreak havoc, you open things up in the passing game. Now, now that guard can't slide out to the D end and help there as quick because you've got a three technique that's a legitimate pass rush. And in the running game, if you've got a three technique that guards can't handle on their own and the tackle needs to help, then you're putting your D ends one on one with a tight end, which is a matchup in the run game that a defensive end should win almost every time. Mm -hmm. Ron, think about it. I mean, you have Everson Griffin, Daniil Hunter, Linval Joseph, and Sheldon Richardson. Holy cow, who do you double team? Yeah, and that, like you said, you, you can't really double team anybody. You got to pick your poison. And I think that's where Sheldon Richardson is going to actually get a lot of single man. Because if Sheldon Richardson, I mean, if you if, you have, if I'm a defensive coordinator and I'm, or offensive coordinator and I'm picking, I'm going to stop Daniil and Everson, especially in the pass game, and then live all in the run game. So Sheldon Richardson early, like you said, is going to have to prove he can still be that guy he was as a rookie. I mean, it's a one-year deal. So you cannot screw up a one-year deal if you want big money later. 
And that's why I think he's going to come out and be hungry every single play, every single game. Now, Cousins and Sheldon Richardson, both proven veterans. What about the rookies at training camp heading into the preseason? How big is this for all the rookies, the undrafted guys? And Mike Hughes, the first round pick, Wabi, he seems to have embraced things from a Zimmer standpoint pretty well early. Yeah, Mike Hughes is going to have a lot on his plate you know, because he's going to have to learn Mike Zimmer's defense, which I'm guessing is a, a fairly difficult thing to do. Plus, he's going to have to learn one of the harder spots in Mike Zimmer's defense, perhaps being a nickel corner training inside. On top of that, I think Mike Prefer wants to get his hands on him yeah. to help in the return game and maybe even in some of the coverage units. Now, Matt, in the second round, the Vikings selected an offensive lineman from Pitt named Brian O'Neill. You playing offensive line all of your career, how difficult is the transition playing? Now, granted, this is tackle. You were a center, but playing offensive line division one and segueing to the NFL. It's hard. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying it's just because I was a lineman. I mean, all positions, there's a lot on your plate. It's a huge transition to the NFL. So a lot of it will just depend on how quickly he can uh, assimilate, how much he can take in. I mean, he's everybody has a ways to go once they get to the NFL. Not everybody's ready to go day one. But you know, I think the good news is, I mean, there's no glaring need, whether it's on the O-line or, or nickel. You know, it's like the Vikings need this guy to come through. I mean, there's a lot of good players on this team. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of good coaches. They can learn from veterans, and they can be brought along. May, may, maybe, maybe some of these guys aren't week one starters, but maybe they grow and develop, and then maybe week five, week six, week seven. And that's more ideal. I mean, you play rookies almost because you, just because you have to, yeah. because you don't have anybody else, and you know there's going to be growing pains. If you can, if you can slow it down a little bit and just grab gradually work them into the rotation, That's that. I think that's more ideal. And Wabi, 20 seconds, you get it all. Let's not forget about drafted kicker Daniel yeah. Carlson <laughs> yeah. with the big leg. He does have a big leg, but he. the more important thing I think for him is is, is he's going to have an accurate leg. Right. We forget. Now, the Minneapolis miracle was awesome, and it was it was Keenum to Diggs. But before that play, who was the hero of the game? It was Kai Forbath. This for the lead. Forbath. I know that Daniel Carlson was drafted and everyone has big expectations for him, myself included. But, I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world to knock Kai Forbath out of here, so I'm excited to watch that competition. That's your winning formula from the beautiful TCO Studios. More game plan after this.